On Wednesday, the Dana School of Music's 150th anniversary celebration will culminate with a gala concert at Stambaugh Auditorium. While the school has seen many changes in those 150 years, it still keeps the same values of its founder. The study was very rigorous and that was what William Dana really wanted. Today we take a look back at the last 150 years in Flashback. Flashback is sponsored by Hickey Metal Fabrication. This faded book, titled Dana's Practical Thorough Bass, was written in the late 1800s by William Henry Dana, founder of the Dana School of Music. Inside, you can see many exercises and lessons, and even some notes from the students who practiced with it. And this one is inscribed to Elizabeth Frack from Girard, Ohio. This piece of Dana history and more can be found in the university archives and special collections on the fifth floor of the YSU's Mog Library. The book is part of a collection of items from John Turk, a former Dana faculty member and author of the book The Musical Danas of Warren, Ohio. Cassie Nesper is curator of the university archives. From the Turk collection, one of the yearbooks. This is their logo when it was in Warren. While the Dana School of Music is now a part of Youngstown State University, it actually began in Warren in 1869 as the Dana Musical Institute. As it says on the book, it was an institution devoted exclusively to the study of music. It stayed there for a long time, many years, and was part of the community with its performances. Students came from all over the country to study there and they boarded there in, in Warren. Educational standards began to change in the 1930s, so in 1941 the school became part of what was then Youngstown College. The name was officially changed to the Dana School of Music in 1950. When it first came to Youngstown College, the school was in the Thomas House on Wick Avenue. So they used the house as practice rooms and like a, a rehearsal space for large ensembles. And then there was a very large garage behind it, and that was more like individual practice rooms. But Dana's arrival wasn't the beginning of music at Youngstown College, which had a music program dating back to 1925. It was led by William Stearns, who was previously the music director at the First Presbyterian Church on Wick Avenue. And he was doing musicals and students were um, getting bachelors of arts degrees in music. They could do all kinds of instruments, but also um, voice and public school music teachers were getting their um, bachelors of arts in public school music. Students could take part in music groups, including chapel choir, orchestra and marching band. We got a football team in 1938. And so the existing music department and other students in the college who knew how to play instruments formed a band. They didn't have uh, official uniforms. Uh, from photographs that we have, it looks like they wore light colored pants mm -hmm. and a dark blazer, mm -hmm. but they're different styles, so I think they were just whatever you had at home. But that wouldn't be the case for long. In 1939, the marching band got its first uniforms. The colors were red and gold up until uh, World War II when they changed to red and white. So on the sleeve here, you have the YC from Youngstown College. This was the uniform of Jack Buechler. There's also pants and a hat that go with this as well. Youngstown College's music school pre-Dana was very small with only three faculty members. But the um, Dana School of Music coming from Warren really gave it a boost. More students, more faculty, more classes. In the early days of the Dana School, students could study parlor music, church music, and band music, while different kinds of music were added to the curricula over the years. For instance, when jazz studies came um, to be more popular in the 1970s, and then you can see when it finally starts appearing in the course catalog as actual courses that you can take leading to a degree. Nesper says the Dana School had a signature style of training professional musicians. William Henry Dana required all students to practice several hours every day, in addition to private lessons and ensembles. This book, written by a Dana faculty member in 1907, has an inscription written on the inside of the front cover that provides some insight as to what it was like for those early students. The grand essentials to happiness are something to do, something to love, and something to hope for. Somebody must have needed a reminding of how to be happy when they were taking history of music class. <laughs> the Dana School of Music still uses that rigorous study of uh, music from an academic standpoint, but also the, the practicing and the development of the student as a person. And 
so when I've been talking to faculty about this anniversary and how the school has changed, really the story is more that it hasn't changed. Many of these items will be displayed at the Dana School of Music 150th Gala Concert Wednesday evening. Starting in May, they will be on display at the University Archives in YSU's Mog Library. The archives are open to the public Monday through Friday from 1 to 4 p.m. Hickey Metal Fabrication, family owned and proudly based in Salem for 75 years. We have state-of-the-art equipment and are ready to handle your start-to-finish fabrication needs. 